Thank you, Mr Speaker. Number six, please. Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Equality Act provision, including the public sector equality duty, apply to local authorities and they are legally bound to implement them. The Equality and Human Rights Commission, an independent public body, is responsible for enforcing the Equality Act 2010 across the public sector, including local authorities, and the EHRC makes its own decisions on how it exercises its functions. Neil Hamden. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Minister for that response. Women from my Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath Beef constituency and across Fife have had their coffee mornings cancelled by five council officers for reasons that have not been adequately explained. Does the Minister agree with me that preventing women from lawfully organising and discussing matters of importance under the protected characteristics of sex forms part of an emerging culture of women being cancelled, uh, intimidated and silenced and is deeply harmful? And does she further agree that all public bodies, including police services and local authorities, must observe the clear definition set out by the Inner House of the Court of Session on the category of sex in the Equalities Act and that an attack on one protected characteristic should be considered an attack on all protected characteristics? characteristics and must be robustly challenged and cease. Uh, Ms, uh, Mr Speaker, I do agree um, with the Honourable Gentleman's sentiments. I don't think it is right that women should be stopped from organising on the basis of their sex. Freedom of belief and speech are vital pillars of our democratic society, and no one should be silenced for expressing their legitimately held opinions. Like any public body in this country, the Honourable Member's local council must have regard to its public sector equality duty in all its functions and decision-making, including the case that he refers to. He may wish to pick the issue up with the Scottish Government, as they are responsible for education policy of the kind that the group we're looking to discuss, but without knowing the particular details of the case, if he writes to me, I might be able to provide more information. Brilliant, Bella. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As uh, the Minister set out, uh, local authorities have a duty to have regard to equality in all of their work, and it's local authorities who facilitate our elections. So, would the Minister agree with me that uh, getting more information about who stands for election published might help us make sure that our electoral system is as fair and as open as it can be? Uh, yes, I would agree with that, and I think that local authorities do carry out um, this work of providing information to the electorate. But if there is something specific which she thinks that they could be doing more of, then in my capacity as local government minister, I'd be very happy to look into that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What urgent conversations is the minister having with British Cycling to ensure that elite fem female athletes, such as Dame Laura Kenny, a six-time Olympic medalist, and her teammates, will not lose their places and have their records broken by British Cyclists' inability to uphold Section 195 of the 2010 Equality Act and implement the agreed guidance from the Sports Council Equality Group on transgender inclusion in sport, which was published in October? Um, the Honourable Lady raises a very in, um, important point. I have not had any specific discussions with British uh, Cycling, but I am very glad that she has raised this issue with me. Um, I will pick up the matter with my colleagues in DCMS who look at sports guidance and see what we can do in order to provide clarity on the subject.